This is the iCoffee Edibot, and it can print directly onto food at 1200 DPI. My name's Jim, and this is the Edge of Tech. I'm in the Edge of Tech studios, proudly powered by STL Flix. If you haven't heard of STL Flix, they're like the Netflix of 3D printing, and now they've added an AI component with STL AI. You gotta check that out. There's gonna be a link in the descriptions for both of those. But recently, iCoffee reached out to me about the new product called the Edibot. They say it can print on food of all different types, and we're gonna put that to the test. Now, this isn't the normal style of printer I usually check out, but this one really had me intrigued. Uh, it came in this nice box, and if I open it up, we're gonna check out what actually came inside. If I can, if I can get it open what in the world. <laughs> so once you pop it open, it looks like a, a white top there. I'm gonna get that out. It looks like there's going to be some stuff inside of this top, which is great. Let's see. All right. Okay, it looks like a, a little uh, instruction booklet, which is cool. And a couple of uh, the platforms that we're going to use for printing right on the food. So I'll lay those down. You also get the iCoffee machine, which looks like this. It's very small, right in the palm of your hand. It fits like that. And it looks like uh, the ink cartridge that goes in the machine, along with a charging cable. And that looks like everything. So... That's what comes with it. Now they tell me that the Edibot can use 100,000 plus colors and it uses a food safe CMYK full color ink cartridge. And in case you're wondering, yes, they do say that it's FDA food safe uh, certified and it's pretty much like a, a food coloring in this little guy right here. And speaking of the ink cartridge, it is a patent cartridge and they say that it could do like 30,000 prints. Um, I did ask them about that, and they say the prints will vary depending on how much ink you're using, how much you're doing, how big the image is, etc. But in an average, over the top of like coffee or, or something like that, it, it should get quite a lot of prints. Now, they're saying 30,000 prints. I'm not sure if it'll quite get there, but we'll find out. And like I said before, they say that it'll do 1,200 DPI high-quality prints right on your delicious snacks. Now the Edibot currently uses an app that has over 500 different templates for you to make your designs and, and get your creativity from. You actually can just go uh, choose the template you wanna use, um, modify it if you need to, and then you're good to go. And if you're not artistic like me, you can actually use the AI image design wizard to create something really cool. Uh, it's as simple as typing in a description of the image you want to see and letting the app do its thing. Uh, I am not great. My five-year-old draws better than me, so I'm definitely going to be using this. <laughs> now, setting up the machine is simple. It's, it's actually really simple. You just need to remove the cartridge from the protective case. Uh, press the button on the top of the machine to open the cover. You want to tear off that protective strip from the cartridge and then insert it straight into the machine and then close the top cover. Now, when you're ready to use the machine, you just take the bottom protective base off, turn on the power and wait for the little startup sound. That's it. It's set up and ready to go and you can start using it. Next, we need to go into the app, tap the little profile icon, select add and add the printer to connect it. From there, once you have it ready to go, you want to click the little latte art uh, logo thing and then go into the design. You can actually select it from the built-in library, the AI chat box like we talked about, or even upload your own images or logos or text or whatever you want to use. Now, once you have your image ready, it's time to get printing. You want to do that by selecting the Start Making button, select iCoffee, and then send the image straight to the Edibot. Now that your machine is ready and your image is sent, you just place the little guide rail, which is this little guy, straight onto the food you want to print on, Press the start button on the top and then gently slide the printer across the food that you want to print on. This will actually print the image straight onto the food. So now that we talked about what this thing is and what they say it can do and all of that kind of good stuff, it's time to start actually trying it. I got a bunch of different stuff I want to try to put pictures on and we're going to see how this thing goes and I'm going to show you along the way. All right, so through movie magic, I've gone through and printed on a whole bunch of different foods and tested this out. Uh, some good, some okay, but we're gonna get to the bottom of it. I'm gonna show you all of it. Uh, don't worry, I got shots of me doing this. So while we talk about each thing, I'll be able to throw a shot and some B-roll 
um, footage of the of the actual food so you can see it close as I'm talking through this. Uh, so I, I started out with the Ritz crackers here. Um, the Ritz crackers went well, mostly. Uh, the first thing I did was this iCoffee logo here. It's kind of small, but you can kind of see it on there. Uh, but yeah, the iCoffee logo came out pretty good on the Ritz cracker. Then I moved on to a little fox, this little fox right here. Um, it was color and I think uh, the Ritz cracker kind of washed out a little bit of the yellows in the color of the fox, but it's the nature of a Ritz cracker because it's this color, right? Pretty cool. Then I moved on to this little heart and the heart came out really good. I, I really like how the heart turned out in the center. And these were the first three things that I tried. Um, I learned a lot in these three things. If you look at the fox, there's like a little miss right on this side, mostly just because I was learning how to line things up and, and stuff like that. But once you get the hang of it, it's super easy. The next thing I wanted to try was the club crackers. Oh geez, I almost broke one. Uh, the club crackers, um, they came out really good. The first thing I did um, was a happy birthday across here just because I thought it would be fun to put happy birthday on a club cracker, kind of cool. Um, the I'm yummy one came next, pretty good. I did little emojis on that. And how I got the emojis is it, there's a text editor. I just typed and got emojis and I just added the emojis. So that was pretty cool. Um, so I got some emojis on that one. And the last but not least, eat me, uh, because why not? It's a, a club cracker and they're so yummy. Um, so eat me on that cracker. <laughs> All three of these came out pretty good. Uh, not Nothing to complain about there. So we'll keep moving. Then I moved on to the Milano. I think it's called Milano, like sandwich cookie things. And these are really cool. They're like a very uh, light colored, very flat surface. And it's, it's almost perfect for this. And these things are super yummy. These are like chocolate mint or something. But uh, the first one I did was like happy birthday, like that. And um, I, actually, I, I think the first one I did was uh, maybe the Edge of Tech. Either way, I, I did the Edge of Tech logo on this one because it came out really, really good. And I, like I said, the happy birthday one. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to get crazy. These were so flat and so nice. I did one of the car show pictures. I was at a car show recently. I took this photo of uh, an old car and I thought, I'm going to put it on here. I, I literally imported a photo from my album, put it in the editor, sent it to the... Uh, to the um, Edibot and and printed right on there. And I, it did a really good job. You can see it, you can see the picture plain as day. And I could see where this would be really cool if you're doing some sort of like wedding stuff or, or anniversaries or any of that kind of stuff where you want like an actual photo, super cool. Next up, I shifted to something I've never seen before called water crackers. They're very light in color. They're really perfect for this actually. And uh, I thought it would be a cool idea to put a little jack-o'-lantern guy on the first one I did. And it came out really good. You can see the colors so good on this. And um, I, I think that was awesome. Then I did a little ghost. Why not stick with the Halloween theme? Came out pretty good on this one as to a little light. Um, but it's the nature, again, of what you're printing on. But it came out super cool. And then last but not least, I thought I'd do one more. Uh, of those photos from that car show. Now, I, I was off a little bit. I misaligned it, but the actual uh, picture turned out really good on this cracker. Um, maybe even better than, than the other one. I'm not sure, but it looks super cool. And it was a really cool use of these crackers. Again, very fun to do. Once you get the hang of it, you can actually do a bunch of these. Just, just set them down, hit the button and roll it. Set it down, hit the button and roll it. So that was, it's, it's really fun to do that. Then I thought I'd go to something with a completely white top. I found these uh, pop tarts. They're like frosted cinnamon. They have nothing, no sprinkles, no colors or anything on the top. And I thought these would be perfect. And the first one I did three shamrocks. Oh, they're upside down. First one I did three shamrocks and it came out so good. This is like exactly what this thing will shine on. You want 1200 DPI, do it on something light colored um, and, and very like this kind of glossy, this frosting. So it, it came out really, really cool. The second one I did kind of blew me away. Same car show, different car. This is a red, uh, a red car that I took um, and it came out really good on this thing. I can't wait to eat these when this, when this is done. I'm, as soon as I'm done filming, I'm going to eat these. So, <laughs> But one of the best parts about these is if you do have any fails, you just eat it and 
grab another one and make it. So Pop-Tarts, big thumbs up. Last but not least, I thought I would get crazy and I did a cup of pudding. Uh, so what I, I actually filled this in with this cup because it wasn't quite there. It was like down to here. So I needed to get it closer. The closer to that print head, the better. And that's what this guide is great for. It sets right on top of your food. You just scan it in like you've been seeing me do, and that works. Now, one thing you don't want to do is hit the bottom of your food on the bottom of that printer. If it hits or rubs or anything, it goes a, a wonky. You get all dirty, and you don't want that, especially with pudding. But as far as pudding goes, I did my logo. It is the Edutech pudding uh, right there. You see it? I don't know if you can see it, but you can definitely see the close-up shots that I did. It came out really good for pudding. I didn't know if it was going to work, but it worked really good, so... Uh, congratulations, Edabot, you can actually do uh, puddings. Hmm, who knew? Now, while I'm using this, something I think that's really cool is that you can actually measure the item that you want to print on using the guide rail that they send. And then in the app, you can make sure that your image is within that area. It actually really helps with making sure that you're going to get the best results and printing right on your food. There's actually like a little ruler here. You set it straight on your food and then you can tell how big it is. So in the app, you can actually move your image to make sure you're not outside of those boundaries. It, it makes it really cool and really easy to use. So there are a couple things that I noticed that you need to try to do. First thing is you need to use a lighter color food for the images to show up really good. So the lighter the color food or the more fair colored the food is, the better the color images are gonna show up on them. It's like uh, if, if you took a piece of black paper and tried to color print on it, it's probably not gonna show up great, right? So the lighter the food, the better, and, and it kind of proved that on some of these things. Um, also practice first. I grabbed a sheet of paper right here and I practiced a lot, as you can see. I mean, I would send test prints. There's a way to actually calibrate that. I did a bunch of times of that too. Um, and you can see it on the back too, but, but yeah, I, I mean, test print on paper is fine. It just takes a second. Make sure your print is good. Get that speed right. Cause sometimes if you go too slow or too fast, it like elongates, you can see, um, some of them in here were okay, but yeah, test print on paper first before you do your foods, especially if it's something that matters, uh, going forward. And, um, you know, also don't forget you can you can actually make this thing um, pretty much repetitive. If you send a send an image to it and you're gonna do the same image over and over like we talked about a minute ago, you can just put your uh, food down, put your guide over, you just touch the button once and it goes, and then <laughs> you just pull it through, do it. Put another cracker down, touch the button again, pull it through. So all you gotta do is hit that button and it'll repeat the last thing you did over and over and over. That's pretty cool. Um, so if you're going to do a bunch of crackers or cookies or something like that, you could batch these out really fast. You know, something I thought would be better is if they had some sort of like stand that was, you know, adjustable. And I did tell them this. I, I gave them some feedback as I was doing this as well. Um, but I thought it would be really cool to be able to adjust this down and just let it sit there and then slide your food under, scan it, slide your food under, scan it. Then this would never have to move, right? You wouldn't have to hold this the whole time. So I'd love to see that happen. Um, how, you know, sitting on top of your food is great. Some of the more um, thin things, if you sit right on top of it, it could break it. So just be careful. But I really think I'd love to see a stand that's adjustable or has some place to put your food right in there. And then you can just scan over and over and over and get you going. But other than that, you know, really cool. It works super cool. It's a lot of fun. It's actually like instantly gratifying. So <laughs> that's something as well, but it's definitely a lot of fun. And the best part is you can eat this when you're done. So that brings me to who I think this would be for. Um, you know, I think the Edabot could probably start to be for that small business or that somebody who um, entertains a lot. So the small business that wants to make a little extra money, put a little extra touch on their food, maybe their logo, maybe do custom uh, foods for somebody. Um, it's gonna cost you a little more time, but you can upcharge for the custom ability that you could do with a printer like this, which is really cool. That I could see a small bakery printing on cookies. Um, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, any, any of the um, uh, holidays. You could do Christmas, uh, Valentine's Day, Easter, 4th of July, like any, literally any of those holidays you could come up with images to and just print them right on stuff, which is pretty cool. The other person I think that this would go good towards is that person who caters 
to their friends. Like maybe you have a lot of people over or, or you entertain a lot at your house and you like to go that extra mile. You like to like one up your friends maybe, or you just want to add that extra touch to, I don't know, a hundred cookies that you give out or, or crackers or something like that. Maybe you just want to show this thing off to your friends because it is pretty fun to use where you come up with uh, crazy sayings to go on crackers like eat me. Um, but it, it really would be a lot of fun like to sit around at, a, at a, a friend's gathering, a party per se, and come up with fun stuff to throw on your food and then eat it. So maybe that's the type of person that would like this too. But I mean, literally, it's, it's so much fun. It's, it's instantly gratifying and, and I can't wait to actually bring this home and show my wife and, and Tristan because they are going to love this. Tristan's want to go nuts with this thing. <laughs> Let's talk about one more thing. It's available now on Kickstarter. And as of the time of the filming now only has a few days left, actually. Um, I'm a little behind because I had a prototype that didn't work so good. And they're like, wait, we don't want you to use that. They're going to send me a new one. And this was the new one. This is like their production one. It is ready to go. You saw how nice the box looked. Everything was packed good. So it's ready to go. But just remember, since it's on Kickstarter, you don't get charged until the project succeeds. In this case, it did succeed. They're past their goal. They're going to succeed. But that's something to always remember is that you don't get charged until the project succeeds in, in the end of the Kickstarter. So you're not going to get charged right now if you want to check it out. Uh, also, there's a risk of not getting the item you backed. There always is a risk with Kickstarter that you, you pay for something and you're backing it, but you never get that item. Um, with that being said, all my dealings with iCoffee have been very good. They've been very responsive to all my questions, to my emails. They, they set up a personal chat with me. Um, it's been really good to work with them. And I don't get that feeling that they're not going to deliver. Uh, I think they're doing a great job. They wouldn't have gone as far as like having retail packaging and stuff like that. I don't think if they weren't going to deliver. So I, I mean, do what you got to do. I have to throw those warnings in all of my Kickstarter videos, but with this one, I think they have a really cool product and you can actually get it now for like 199 bucks, which is awesome. So if you have time, jump on that Kickstarter and grab one before it's over. Uh, like I said, for 199 bucks, this is a great deal. So let me know in the comments below what food you would print on if you had one of these and what types of things you would print. Would it be silly sayings or pictures or logos or what? I'm really curious because I want to try it out. So hit the comments below. Let me know what you want to try and what kind of things maybe I should try next. You never know. And if you haven't seen this one right here, definitely check that one out too.